I have got a good one for you today. This is a fantastic ROM hack. I've been following the development of it for a little while. Um, and I kind of forgot about it. I admit for, for a few months and I checked back in expecting there to be like maybe a couple of gems added in and the absolute mad lad developing it has completed the whole thing. So I'm so excited to actually play through this game for the first time. I did a little bit of an off screen play test and I was having so much fun. That I actually got totally carried away and played it for hours and just having a blast so we're gonna crank up the difficulty a bit though i want i was playing on the second difficulty we're gonna play on the highest difficulty. lunatic very fun um yeah let's uh let's get into it so let's take a look this game is a uh, poke emblem and uh it is a rom hack of fire emblem 8 so you will need uh to have a, a legally acquired copy of fire emblem 8 to play it uh, you can pull the ROM off of that and then patch it. Uh, and the patch you can get uh, from the Discord and you can apply it through a website. It's very easy. Uh, they can walk you through it there at the Discord. Um, yeah, that's uh, but that's all you have to do is just have a copy of that. So <clears throat> it is the base game is Fire Implement, but then on top of that, they have this. I want to say strong veneer of Pokemon. There's a lot of Pokemon mechanics that are built in. Um, there's like the inventory of Fire Emblem 8, but that's actually not how the attacks are done. The attacks are like a separate system from the inventory now. Um, and if, there's a few other key changes, but it's, it's essentially... Pokemon and Fire Emblem, you can wander around collecting Pokemon and battling them. Um, notably, there is no permadeath, and the game is not balanced around permadeath. There is no permadeath mode, um, but the there is like a temporary death mechanic where you would have to go back to a Pokemon Center to revive. So we'll experience some of that. I'm sh in fact, a lot of that, I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of uh, dying... Uh, especially in the early game before we really get some of the powerhouses that uh, are available in the later part of the game. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into this. Turn the sound up real quick, make sure that that is working. Um, oh, uh, it is not. One moment. This should be. Yes, okay, there we go. I think now it's working. Good, okay, so we've got sound. Okay. Let's see, uh, we'll see uh, my save file here in a moment. We're gonna make Lunatic, we're gonna go to this empty save file. Made it to Lavender Town on my other save file. It's fine, we, we saved right out in front of a pit. We're good there. Save Lavender Town. We're not gonna randomize, although there is a randomizer. Um, let's see, oh, I did um, let's see, let's go with the classic here, one of my favorite names whenever I'm in doubt. Oh um, yeah, make it be perfect. Okay. So, who's the kid? This is McBigley, your new neighbor. I mentioned they were coming, remember? Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Hope. People call me the Pokemon Professor. Welcome to the world? What are you saying, old man? Hush now, Gary. Your very own Poke Emblem legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures. Get on with it already. Not what he's like. Fine. McPigley, you've been patient. Go ahead and pick your starter. Hey, Grant, what about me? Just hold on, Gary. You can have one, too. Um, so here's the starters, and one thing you'll notice is that we can see the growths, which if you're a fan of Fire Emblem is amazing. Uh, also, you'll notice that the growths are really high. Now, this is not unique to the starters. In fact, the starters are pretty average, I've found, compared to a lot of the other things. Um, they're 
kind of above average, especially in the early game, but honestly, some of them really get outshined, especially I found Bulbasaur. Some of the grass types that are available in the mid game are actually really good. I don't really feel the need for Bulbasaur, what, or a water type for that matter, but what I was wanting was a fire type in my playthrough. So we're going to start with Charmander. So we have access to Ember. That is going to help a lot, I think. Um, notice that Charmander's growths are spread pretty evenly, um, which makes him more of like a mixed attacker type, which isn't exactly the best in higher difficulties, but he can fly when he evolves. So that, that is going to be the big thing, is the flying movement and the rescue will be able to utilize that to win some fights that otherwise might be a bit more dicey. So that'll be really good. And notably has pretty decent um, defense and resistance growths. It's not bad. They're, they're non-zero. So um, won't just fold to a single hit. And as he Gary he says, hey, I'll just take these ones then. He takes two. A root. Let's see, so for this fight, if I remember correctly, what works really nicely is to growl. No, something that I want to point out um, is we have a few options here to attack. We can move in and attack with our items here. Um, that is a valid way, but we also have this AoE option, um, which can allow us to hit multiple units. And this has its own special range indicator. We can actually rotate this around too, so it's quite sophisticated. Uh, I really enjoy this. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, how they do their spells. Um, although this is honestly a little bit deeper than even Final Fantasy Tactics because their spells are just, like this has different shapes and stuff for the different spells, which is interesting. Um, typically the, all of these abilities for AoE seem to be two range like this, so, um, but, uh, or rather, all of the, the ones that look like this uh, Tetris piece here seem to be too range. We also have some um, that are like a line, and then there's also a few unique melee ones that I've seen that are pretty interesting. Um, I'll point those out too. Now in this case, we want to use Growl, if we're up against two opponents and they're going to completely smash us if we don't lower their attack. We lower both of their attacks, and I think this works. Uh, Okay, so we get hit. Notice also, another big change, is there is a knockback on hit. Um, now, we won't be surviving hits very often, but that is actually a really big deal. Um, so we want to make sure to uh, position carefully. Here, Pikachu is going to give us a hand. Otherwise, this fight will not be winnable. Our berry kicks in. Come in here and swag. Uh, actually, no, we cannot. I think we just growl again, but this time harder, and uh, we let it just knock out, knock itself out. Oh, hey, Pikachu gives us the kill. Oh, nice. That's very, that's very good. Thanks, Pikachu. Bro. That's not fair. You two teamed up on me. Losers. Sorry about him. He's a real brat. Ah, parenting. Oh, speaking of. Your mother left this for you. Honey, let's go. <laughs> so we have this town area, um, and you'll notice we have a lot of movement. This is not normal. We won't have this much movement in the combat areas, but in the town areas, we get tons of movement. It's the maximum that the game allows. And if we go to our house, we can enter, and it'll allow us to our first save. Not sure why that said Lavender Town at first. Very strange, because pulled over from my other file or something. Um, and there is P01. That's our Charmander. Very. Also got a supply crate here that has some stuff in it, which is nice. We get started off with some items, and uh, we can go ahead and. Drop a save down. I like the um, last wave of Amigawa kind of style of art here. It's very pretty. Uh, we can tr go here and try to get a map, but it doesn't actually work. Find a world map, but it is all scribbled over. Decide to leave it. So we don't get that. Uh, we do, however. The next area. 
So here, um, see, we'll actually, we'll do the catching tutorial just for the sake of it. Uh, oh, I just accidentally selected yes. Hmm, okay. Uh, guard, we do have guard. I kind of want to catch the Pidgey first, because I feel like this Mankey is just going to knock us out. I'm going to go for a Pidgey. So what we're going to do is step to the edge of the range here. Step to the edge of the range. And press guard. And that's going to increase our defense. Increase our resistance. This Pidgey's going to come in, barely do any damage to us. And we want to weaken it to the point where we can knock it out with this capture command, which lets us select an attack. So we can't... You can see a power on the right. That's ours. And we do 7 damage in this situation, but Pidgey here has 11 hit points. You can see that's the top left here, um, and would do 4 damage in return to us. So this is not going to capture the Pidgey. So instead, what I want to do is back up a step. I'm going to stand on the grass to give us a slight dodge chance, and grab. That's going to make it do a little bit less damage to us, which will be nice because this map is pretty big. So here, we almost knock it out, um, so I didn't think about that, So it's good that we didn't. And now we can capture it with a scratch attack. Here we go, we'll knock it out and get experience, and then because we use the capture command to knock it out, it will reappear as part of our team. Nope. And it consumes 300 Poké Dollars, we start with uh, quite a lot. So here is our first capture. We have a Pidgey. Now, Pidgey is actually pretty good, apparently. I totally skipped over Pidgey in my first playthrough, so I kind of want to use it. Um, I hear that Pidgeot, the final um, evolution of it, is really good. Uh, so that's going to be exciting to try out. Let's see. So also these berry trees here, forage those and get free healing. Um, and those refresh every time you come into the map. So healing is free and abundant. Um, no need to use your super potions outside of like dangerous scenarios where you need them, like gym fights, that sort of thing. Um, this grass, you'll notice its hit points keep recovering. When that fills up all the way, a new Pokemon will spawn. So we don't actually want this <laughs> to keep spawning Pokemon. So we're gonna knock that out and it'll stay gone for the rest of the time on the map. We're gonna wait. Oh, sorry, I have a reflex to press that fast forward button. That messes with the music. I'll try to stop doing that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. One other key mechanic here is the call ability. Uh, this brings your entire party right next to you. And you can do this anytime out of combat. So if we wanted to, say, set up an ambush, um, we could run in here and then call and bring our Pidgey right next to the Mankey to try to get an attack from a range that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to. Um, but that is not what we're going to do. We're actually going to try to lure in the Mankey with the guard command on our computer. Go. Do a little bit of damage to it in return. We can't quite knock it out with a scratch, um, but what we can do is hit it with a, I guess a tail whip, might as well, just to make sure that Pidgey can capture it. There go! Now we have a Mankey. Okay, so this, uh, I guess we're just gonna knock out. Uh, might as well get the experience. Oh, it's a uh, that does remind me, though, I do want to check settings. So, um, I do recommend you change some of these. First off, manual or quick save is probably a good option. Um, this can prevent a few problems. I don't want to spoil things. Um, let's see. Uh, display danger zone automatically. This is something up to you. You can hit select to turn this off or on. Um, I like to leave this on automatically. Uh, you do want game speed on max. I would say set text speed to max. Um, the HP bars, I think, are really good. Auto cursor sets it to your main hero, which is just your first deployed character. Uh, 
that. Again, that's up to you whether you like that or not. Most Fire Emblem players don't like this. Uh, auto interns, again, up to you. Uh, music, up to you. Sound effects, up to you. Uh, so window color, green or gray are the only correct choices. But uh, there are two other options for some reason. I, I don't understand why. So we'll stand on the edge here and guard. And those are going to spawn some more Pokemon soon, but that's alright. We want a bunch of stuff to punch at this point. Hmm, can't quite get a knockout there. Oops. I <laughs> opened a muscle memory there. I thought that, uh, it would have an AoE attack. So we're going to hit this with a Tail Whip AoE. Go. And you'll notice that we don't take a counter attack or anything. It doesn't even uh, check for that, which is really nice. And now that we've done a teeny chip of damage, come in with the Pidgey and knock it out. Oh, a Rattata. Rattata is pretty good in the early game. Um, from what I hear, uh, it falls off pretty quickly. Also, this is very important. When we reach the end of this zone, uh, we will be able to teleport back and forth between this sign and one that is very similar to it. Okay, so we've definitely got enough to take on this trainer now. So what we want to do is step to the edge of their range, and there's not really much point trying to, like, uh, get right up on the trainers or anything. They'll just walk through you. But, uh, there is some strategy in terms of how you position, um, they won't try to attack you the round that you step into their range, except for your rival, but, um, the, it is still advantageous to position, like, some units, say, further apart, or, um, very close to the opponent, say, if they have short room movement, or something like that, or only access to melee attacks. So we're gonna actually put Pidgey over here. Thank you over here. Yeah. Put them in range of um, I think one spawns on the left and on the right. Oh, it's just the just the single Rattata. Oh, okay. And the other Rattata decided to move forward, so that's actually kind of spooky. Uh, Rattatas can do a lot of damage. Only this one. If we can one shot. No. Only one shot. No, we don't have a fighting move yet either. But I think we need to focus on knocking this this rat attack. Oh. And I think starting with a tail whip is gonna be key. And this rat attack is stronger. Yeah, this red attack is much stronger. Ooh, uh, hmm. It seems something is getting knocked out. Well, uh, I guess let's trade out the main key. that button there. Up. Gonna level up on the Pidgey. I think he is pretty good early on. Um, he helps with the first gym, but does fall off. I mean, Primeape has always been kind of meh. That's not too much of a surprise. Alright, we have a flying attack for Pidgey now. We could uh, just try to catch more Pokemon. Yeah, but that actually would be kind of a waste of money. I'm just gonna leave and re-enter. We don't have to refight the trainer. We actually we can. If we want to. We do not have to. Um, however, the wild Pokemon will respawn. We can call here. We can just go back. Let's go ahead and save while we're here. 
save file. Here we go. Here's our three Pokemon. And uh, we can give them some items here. That flashing in the background, I don't know what, what that's about. can do is bring our allies over here, set them slightly out of range. Also again. And then just guard with Charmander. Okay. And this will result in a free kill for me. For our main key. I should say not. Yes. Let's become unconscious. And uh, you can see we step into this trainer's reign. In the next turn, it will just ask us if we would like to rematch. This time. So once again, we'll step over here. Oh, that brings both of our allies over there. And I don't, I don't think I'm guarding with Charmander. <laughs> Steak. Um, but we already have a Tail Whip on the key, which is nice. See? Very low defense there. Not quite enough. You'll notice that Gust kills. We do not want that. <laughs> We'd rather that Gust be not kill. And what we can do is use the AoE version, which also kills. Um, hmm. Well, the AoEs do less damage. Okay, well, I guess we need to walk up and attack. We'll take a little damage, but that's okay. Oh. Pause. We want... Scratch. We want to get a knockout with Mankey. We want to be getting a little bit of experience on Mankey, so that Mankey can get some... its attacks. And let's go ahead and... break that. Berries, uh, eat those as whatever I think the Pokemon is low hit points, it will be Which is very nice. But I think it's only if they have it equipped. Which I haven't actually explained um, how the item system. So here we see our inventory. Um, you'll notice that there are no attacks here. Which is very different from how Fire and Bloom really works. This is just a place for supporting items. We have another page where our attacks are located. And um, you can actually have up to five attacks rather than the traditional four, but um, I don't think that really detracts from it feeling like Pokemon very much. I think it's pretty cool. It feels nice. I think also a lot of Pokemon have four move slot syndrome, so <laughs> It does increase the viability of a lot of things. Okay. Step over here so that we're out of the range. Because I would rather reposition over to this side. And then step here. Figure this way. I might be little, but I won't like it if you go easy on me. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. Hope you're having a good day. Looks like we're up against a Caterpie and a Weedle. Well, let's see here. Ring shot. So this can slow us. We really don't like that. And get doubled. 
Oh, I didn't mention, um, doubling requires 10 additional speed. So right now, something would, even if we had zero speed, something would have to have 10 speed, even maybe double that speed. I don't think these do. Right now, that doesn't actually matter that much. But what does potentially matter is the poison damage here. Ah, so we can see super effective attacks also matter. Uh, notice that flying symbol is flashing. So we're actually doing, I think, double damage here is very good. We just one-shot that Weedle, and we do, we will be one-shotting a lot of things. Also, we will be getting one-shot quite a lot. So we need to keep that in mind. Also, I don't think, yeah, we don't have a fire-type attack yet here on Armander. Unfortunately, we have no way of getting in range of this pet. It's okay. So we'll growl at the Caterpie, and that will prevent it from doing any damage to anything. Oh. Three damage is not so bad. I should mention also the hit chance that you see on things uh, is a bit of a lie because um, when you miss, it actually, I think it just does half damage, so you never actually do zero damage. And the minimum damage you can do is one, even against um, enemies with lots and lots and lots of hit points. You do a minimum one damage per attack. It's a little different that way too. Let's see, but I think we should be able to knock this out with that, but I kind of don't want to. I would rather weaken it a bit so that something else could knock it out. Ah, you saw there, we only did three damage. That's a, a glancing blow, it's called. Hmm. Kind of in an awkward spot now. The tail whip it. I think that would let Mankey take it out. That lowers its defense down. You can see um, it took a defense buff. So the growl and the uh, tail whip have reduced its stats basically to zero here. Come in. Scratch. And damage. No. There's our Mankey left left. Uh, skill speed, okay. Starts out pretty beefy on the attack side anyway, so it's got a decent enough attack base that we really need to worry about not getting attack growths. It's this, no. Okay. Uh, let's grab that. That's good. Those do not respawn. And here we'll show off the call mechanic. Uh, I can step over here. Call. And then that Pokemon can't act again this turn, but this one can. We can say, use Gust, weaken this, without taking a counterattack. And step in with Mankey here. Have a knockout. here and grab this. Make sure to stop that from spawning. We've actually got everything we want there. Oh, we did get a crit. Let's see. Watch this. Oh, that didn't knock it out. Oh, yes. So, they actually do gain hit points, uh, and you have to knock them out to make them go away. I believe all of these are grass-type Pokemon, effectively, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, so, fire-type and flying-type attacks well, those bug type attacks are super effective against them. I feel like they should absorb water type attacks. Honestly, I think that'd be pretty funny. Ah, here's our first big held item is this muscle band. Uh, strength plus three, and you'll notice that just having it in our inventory doesn't apply its benefits. We have to uh, go to the item bag, or item option here, and select it. Let's equip. But, and now, we have two plus three, which is five. That's much better than two. Much, much better than two in fact. Uh, but actually, I think I would like to trade uh, this. 
And the item at the top is the one that gets equipped by default. Oh, um, but that appears to not be a thing in this game. Hmm. That is usually how Fire Emblem works, is you can trade things to the top of the list and they will be automatically equipped, but it seems in this game that it's not the case for Helldiver. Good to know. Um, still, I think we can use Gust to knock this out. Um, which we definitely should do, because we are under some pretty serious threat. Eh? And we'll guard with Chuck. Good. The Rattata doesn't advance until, um, the... Until we step into its range. They're not grouped together. Um, so we can also we can press select to turn this on and off. Um, let's get a, or a knockout for Charmander here. It's nice. And then we'll wait until next turn to aggro that bar. Guard is a very strong ability, and I think all the starters start with it. You really need to work around it in the early game, otherwise things are going to be very rough and lunatic difficulty. Everything does tons of damage. You can see here, if I come in just for a scratch against this, <clears throat> it does... Okay, so I think we have made it. Yep, we've made it to the end of the map now. That forage here. Notice that it can tell we're out of combat, so we don't have to wait for a turn to end. It just gives us our movement back. We can walk over here again. That sign is the one that we can teleport to and from. Use that a bit. And here we are in Viridian, Viridian City. Now, because we have a flyer, we can actually just fly right over this water um, and take this. Get Icy Wind pretty early on. Uh, normally, we would have to get Rock Smash without a flyer. Also, we can talk to this guy. He offers us something interesting. He offers us a Psyduck. Worth it? I don't know. It's a water type. Um, that's probably good for us. I mean, it's pretty Barak. We like water types. Let's buy it. Let's buy the Psyduck. That'll be good. We have a fourth party member. Um, but before we can see the Psyduck, we have to go here. I didn't see a Psyduck anywhere else, either. I think this might be... <clears throat> if not, if, if it's not the only way to get a Psyduck, it's the first place to get a Psyduck for a long time. So, let's, um... Gear up here. I bet Psyduck can learn Icy Wind. And... Surely not. Nope, okay. Would be cool, though. But Psyduck, then. Ah! Set up has berries now. We've got our muscle band on Minky. We really don't <clears throat> really don't want to have to use these super potions. But if we have to use them, we have to use them. And also any mon can access the supply at any time. So it's okay if we just leave stuff in. Um, it's not an imposition. Go ahead and save. Now we've got Psyduck with us. So Psyduck is level four. That's actually pretty, pretty strong. Um, Armons are about that level, so not bad. Uh, <clears throat> the strength and magic growth, pretty decent. Uh, defense and resistance, pretty middling stats, really. A little higher magic. Probably not a super epic late game threat or anything, but it's a water type. We like water types. Water types are good. In that they are not bug types. Okay, so <clears throat> here we can see a little hint of something rather interesting, which is that there is a skill system. You'll recognize this from certain other Fire Emblem games, although not Fire Emblem 8. Um, and some of these skills, a lot of these skills actually are just going to be Fire Emblem skills. 
correctly implemented, which is pretty cool. They're pretty expensive. We won't be able to buy those yet. Also, jelly donuts are really good. Um, we're not going to buy those. No, we can buy TMs. Fantastic. So if we wanted to, we could buy Ember, but we're not going to do that because we'll actually learn it pretty soon. Um, and in fact, we can tell when exactly we'll learn it by selecting and then note these arrows here. We press right. Boom. More stuff. Uh, and we can check learn set and see each and every move that we're going to learn and at what level and all the information about it. So you can see we'll learn Ember at level 7. And we are right now level 5. So we've got a little bit of a ways to go, but we will get Ember soon. We do not need to buy that. <laughs> see if anything else particularly wants a tier. Mm. Nothing too amazing there. Uh, no good coverage moves there. Nope, okay. Well, nothing too amazing as far as the shopping opportunities go in that first part, but that's alright. There are some much better uh, TMs later on, and I'm pretty sure that the TMs come on. Um, you eventually get access to all of them, which is very cool. Also, I noticed uh, the first time I played through here, which you can just fly around, like in the base game, and get a relief, which is pretty good. This is especially good on flyers and on uh, that are good do using like um, or rather doing uh, rescue duty. It's also really good on tanks. Tanks aren't very good in this game. So I didn't really get any particularly good tanks, so I don't know what we're going to use that on. Not really sure. Maybe Charmander. Uh, so this fight is kind of hard, though. Uh, this might be the first fight that really kind of makes us struggle a bit. Let's see how this goes, because he is just going to completely jump onto me. And I don't know if Charmander is tough enough. I know. Um, it's sad to see that you're struggling along back here. I've already caught three Pokemon. More than enough to take you down. Let's see, Squirtle. Uh, that seems his grandpa made him pick. Is a Squirtle, a Rattata, and a Weedle? It looks like only the Weedle actually gets to go in, but we get poison. It's lame. Uh, okay. So this has to does not have confusion. It only has bubble. Hmm. Let's see. It has scratch, but scratch is pretty wimpy. Let's see. We want to try to knock out the squirtle if we can, because that's the big threat. Scratch teach icy wind. That would have probably been helpful. So I think what we could do, do an AoE Tail Whip. It's going to lower Portal's defense pretty dramatically. Uh, we can see here, I think it's, yeah, a minus three. So that's really going to matter. And then we can come over here and do a, a bubble, I guess. Do a Gust. an attack from Mankey. Nice. Just barely takes it out. And we got rid of the Squirtle, which is good. That was one of them. That was really the main threat in this situation. Drink speed, that's good. We need that. Um, now, the Rattata is particularly scary. But we can't really do anything with that. Um, but I can, however, knock out this Weedle. So we're going to do that. Something is probably going to get knocked out by this rat attack. Yeah, totally one shot by the rat, but that's okay. Um, we can just go right back to the Pokemon. We're not going to have to fight Gary again. Uh, we do, however, need to beat up this rat. We're going to use Bubble to take no re uh, retaliation. And then I think so. yeah, we should be able to knock it out. Okay, oh, you beat Gary. 
very cool. Whatever, man. I was going easy on you. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not actually sure if I want to use Icy Wind on... I want to use Icy Wind on Psyduck. Icy Wind is pretty cool, and I didn't see that move again. I actually didn't get that on my first playthrough, and that's pretty rad. I don't know what I would put it on, like maybe a horsey? Not sure what could even learn it. Whoops. Uh, let's call everybody over here. And then we do is move Psyduck out of the way. And this is a heal spot. Uh, it gives us a little bit of a void. Pretty nice. But also it heals in an area around it, but only once. So. We need to defend this, but we also um, only use it once per time we are in the map. So we don't want to waste it either. Are you going to Viridian Forest? It's a natural maze in there. How about a battle? Got a rat and a pigeon. Rat and a bird. Mm, we can't do any call shenanigans. So what I think we should do is try to fight. We should step to the back, guard, and back up here. Try to eat a couple hits. Oh, I should not have given up that heal spot. We do get a good retaliation in there, and now they're in a much more vulnerable position. Let's see, so Bubble doesn't do quite as much as I would want. But it does. Mm. So currently we don't quite have enough to take down this rat. We could though. Oh, I've got low kick. We've got more than enough to take down the rat. Okay, so now the question becomes the bird. Which also has gust. Mm. So we should go into melee with it. A couple of snacks. Um, so that has knocked it off the heel, which is good. Now it doesn't have as much dodge chance, and it can't retaliate at melee, so we're gonna move into melee again. Interesting that it only gets knocked back once. And let's go ahead and growl it so it doesn't knock something out next turn. Oh, I aggroed the Nidoran, didn't mean to do that. Definitely would have knocked out Mankey if it were not for that route. And uh, I guess we could feed that to Mankey. Since Mankey's at the back here. What? Very nice. Oh, hi! Icy Wind was a late addition. I forgot to add to the store. Oh, it's Vesley! Hi, Vesley! Good to have you here. Um, I see. So, uh, Vesley is the maker of this game. Uh, and just forgot to add it to a store. Well, okay. So I do only have one of those. That's good to know. <laughs> Very good to know. Hmm. I'll have to think hard on where I use that. Icy Wind is quite a powerful status move. If you're not aware, uh, it lowers the uh, special attack. Or not the special attack. It lowers the speed. Uh, so that is nice. And it's an ice attack. So those are comparatively fairly rare. Okay, so we're gonna... Do a little bit of damage to this. Capture. Because uh, Nido King is very good. This is going to be a permanent member of our team. We'll add it to Vermilion or something. Very nice. 
And that seems about right. Somewhere around Vermilion or, or um, Lavender. I mean, it would really help in Vermilion to get through Rock Cave, to have access to ice moves, um, the super effectiveness on ground type. So useful. Let's see, so we've got a Nidoran now. Uh, do we, I guess we can go ahead and catch a Spearow. Spearow is pretty good. This was the flyer I was using in the other playthrough. Mm -hmm. I guess we even want to spend our money on it. Not really. Yeah. Good man. Uh, Firo might be good, but I think we can probably catch a Firo later if we really want one. So, uh, let's just try to aggro it next turn. We're just gonna play all these fights nice and slow. Try to have as much action on player phase as possible, and as little action on enemy phase. Uh, definitely do not want to be enemy phase gaming. Okay, so player phase gaming. Yeah, gonna kill this and move on. We can, now that we're out of combat, we can call, knock this out, grab a little item here, what's this, wise glasses, oh that's, that's good, that's very good, there's also some items here that we can't access until we have cut, we'll come back once we get that, but there is the end of the route here, uh, which makes Gordle more competitive with Bulba and Chicago, that makes sense. Um, now we can teleport back and forth. Very handy. Yeah, Bulbasaur definitely helped out in uh, the first gym battle. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, I, I forgot that there was a forest here. I was thinking that we would be going directly into town. I actually kind of want to go back and take that heal. I never did take that heal. So let's let's knock these out and then go take a heal. Okay. So we can see, by the way, that. The move that was at the top of my list is what we have retaliated with. So if we go over to moves, see Growl is there. We should have lowered attack. Yeah. So uh, if we want to retaliate with something different on enemy phase, it's important to press right and go to moves and switch these around. So see, now we would retaliate with Scratch. That's at the top um, of the list. But, um, I don't think this has just ranged attack and leer. Not a super strong leer. Let's try an AoE Tail Whip. See if we can pick up a knockout. Can, just barely. Very nice. And I think we will be able to grab this with a pigeon. Very good. And um, we'll just decline the rematch for that trainer. Grab the heal and beat Thank you. What we can do is just fly down here with our Pidgey. We don't have to move all the units, which is really nice. We can just call. That's probably here. Go. Everybody's healed back up. And notice that it only counts combat turns for these uh, these bushes here. Uh, these non-combat turns, it's not growing. So that's very nice. It's only when we actually end the turn that that will grow. Everybody moves to the next room. Let's see. 
So there's a Weedle, another Weedle, a Metapod, a Metapod, a Weedle, I don't see any Pikachu. Possible for Pikachu to spawn here. Oh, there's a Pikachu. Hey, nice. You like Pikachu. But, um, I think also the boss spawns a Pikachu, but this is a terrifying boss that I really am not wanting to fight until after Brock. Um, but we're gonna come back for Beedrill post Brock. Uh, um, I think that is, uh, he's spooky. He's level 10. There's no way that we could knock that out. Um, and the thing about boss mons is they have friends. Um, when we get within attack range, it will summon a bunch of other mini mons that we have to fight that are actually pretty buff. And then, uh, and we literally cannot damage this mon until all of those, its minions are defeated. So, boss fights can be a bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, very challenging. And, uh, that one is a lot to handle. But uh, getting our, our hands on a Beedrill would be good. We can't catch the boss mons, but they s spawn with uh, extra strong... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, extra strong babies, basically. <laughs> uh, and we can catch those. Definitely. Yeah, honestly, maybe we do try to... Oh, there's a Pikachu right here. Yeah, I mean, we could try. I've, I've done a pretty cheesy thing, actually, with the Kadabra fight. We might be able to pull it off here, too, uh, although <laughs> I worry that Vesley would patch it. Um, yeah, so I don't know if this is intended, but something... I, I got my Kadabra a little early in my off-screen playthrough, oops, because I went to the Kadabra boss fight as soon as I could and sacrificed all but two mons, um, one of which was able to capture an Abra and the other was able to immediately exit the map and I was allowed to keep the Abra. I just went back to the town. I don't know how you feel about that, but I did manage to get my hands on a level 26 Abra by just sort of yeeting myself at Kadabra and taking a, an Abra home with me. <laughs> um, so that is... I'm, I'm gonna try that here. I think it probably will be effective at getting a, us a Kakuna at the very least. It would be really nice to get a Kakuna or a Pikachu um, at level 10. <laughs> that is an intended strategy. Okay, well, all right. I guess I need to enable that emoji. I don't I don't know. I'm still new to this. Whole streaming thing. Okay, I guess we're gonna use that to get our Pikachu then. I think Beedrill does spawn with a Pikachu. So we'll uh we'll guard and try to knock this one out. Because we wanna catch Beedrill's baby Pikachu. I'm pretty sure Beedrill patrols as well. Although it patrols apparently in the opposite direction that we're looking for it. Thumbs up on Discord. You don't know Twitch. I see. Ah, yeah. Hmm. This has a ranged attack. Need to get into melee with it. Not bad damage from the side deck, actually. I'm wanting to level up Charmander so that we can get um, seven for Ember. I'm a little nervous about engaging at all with the Beedrill without Ember, because I don't know how we would really get Kakuna. But we may be able to punch some of these, uh, some of these other wimpy guys around here. Although, notably, until we end turn proper, this Beedrill ain't going anywhere. Need to be careful not to engage that. Start here.
Now Beedrill has gone further around the circle. Leave someone at the entrance. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I can kind of like ring around the rosy here <laughs> and avoid it. I guess I'm not sure if that's going to work now that I think about it. Try. It's, it's, it's a bit late now. Um, I can't get over there. Knock that out. Make a quick save. <laughs> hmm. oh, Alternator? That's convenient. I'm just gonna probably tail whip this. Metapod is not particularly threatening. I think this is going okay. Especially with call available to us potentially. Should be alright. Get rid of the reinforcements, then take on the Jigen. Metapod pretty weak to special attacks. Still don't have Ember. That's okay. Try to catch this Caterpie's attention. Yeah, well, I mean to say we can use Call to avoid the boss fight. Uh, <laughs> that, in theory, we should be able we have the mobility to not get caught, hopefully. Call here. And now we should be fine, I think. So, will Charmander level up? Oh. Oh. We have Ember. Hey, we got him. Time for fire. So there's a couple complicating factors over there. Beedrill is now going in circles. Kind of worried about taking on the fight up here with those two Weedles. Let's continue. Let's knock out this Caterpie and Pikachu and just wait for Beedrill around here. I think this seems like a pretty good spot to try to fight. So we'll go ahead and aggro the Caterpie. I'm not too scared of it. Someone can over to get to that. Yeah. I just want to get the speaker to out with. It's not particularly strong because we can just walk right up to it and get into melee, but as soon as it's allowed to range attack, get this apart. Because, no, oh, it starts with six magic and a four power attack. Caterpie being a Caterpie is technically a Pokemon. Ads over there. All right, so now we've cleared out a wide, safe area for us to potentially run away if we need to, and we're gonna try to kite out the bee drill. We can fight the bee drill here and maybe kill something, and then leave the map as soon as we capture something. 
Hopefully we can capture at least one thing. We might even be able to capture two things. Let's find out. We'll put Charmander here. Charmander guard. The most use. So like around am not particularly helpful in this context. Let's send Nidor on ammo. Okay, so here we see a little bit of a tutorial. Wild boss Pokemon shield themselves with a power of aura and cannot be caught. They are immune to attacks until their spawns are defeated. Big scary mon with uh, some assistant mons. Two Weedles. Three Weedles. Oh, it does not spawn with a Pikachu. I thought it spawned with a Pikachu. Uh, is it random? Oh no. Uh, regardless, we are going to try to take this level 10 Weedle. We're going to try to take this level 10. That feet. Both of these would be good. Um, the issue is... Can we actually capture this? Um, which is pretty nifty. We could just go for a, a Beedrill, which is pretty dope. And then, uh, can we... What are we doing? Kind of a lot. Hmm. Let's just try to stay in and see if we can get our hands on a Caterpie 2. Uh, I'm just gonna run some fodder up here. You know, if there's anything out. A little bit of damage with a tail whip, I guess. Uh, but you can't really do anything, and I don't want it to get one shot. I'm actually just going to kind of keep it on the edge. And I'm going to run Mankey up in the hopes that something comes here to die to Pidgey. I'm going to stand here. Wait, we're going to not proceed to the next area. The other two are random from the air. Let's see. Oh yeah, I definitely got a Pidgey on the last playthrough. Or not a Pidgey, I got a Pikachu on the last playthrough and it was glorious. Okay, our Weedle gets knocked out, but that's fine. We're really after the uh, Caterpie. At this point. Can't get the Caterpie in one hit. Um... Hmm. So, here's a thought. Is what I can do is I can spend a little more just to get this Caterpie by capturing... I can capture another Weedle. Let's stand here. Yeah. And then use that Weedle to slightly damage the Caterpie. And then capture the Caterpie. And then leave. Majorly damaged, it seems. Okay, and now we have a Caterpie. I didn't capture it. I just knocked it out. Uh. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. We got some XP. We got some XP. Okay. Well, we wanted to get a Pikachu anyway, right? So it was just, it was a test. We got the Weedle. The strategy works. Also, evolve. Yes. And then evolve again. There's no reason to not evolve. You always want to evolve. Hmm. 
We have a Kakuna. And then... Kakuna, notice, is not much better, but that's okay. Now, I have a Beedra. Not actually very useful for Brock. At least as far as I'm aware. But very useful outside of Brock. <laughs> lots of damage. Many stats. If we check its growths here, we can see that they are fairly okay, actually. Pretty good strength and HP and speed and skill. It's also got resistance growth, which is kind of interesting. But it will definitely fall off compared to some of the other things that we'll encounter, I think. Um, but I've heard that Beedrill is top tier, or up there at least, depending on who you ask. Let's go back and heal up. Flying movement is also really nice. I wonder what kind of uh, TM situation we can do. Um, oh, we did catch that second beetle that we didn't actually. Beedrill and Butterfree are... Oh. <clears throat> ah, yeah. That makes sense. Sense. It, it does seem like a, a nice kind of Jake and Roll. Lil. Well, that makes me definitely not want to put TMs on them. What I really want to get is a Pikachu. Let's go, let's see if we can go get one of Beedrill's Pikachu. That'd be nice. And we're gonna need some levels anyway. No, and we're on we're on lunatic. A couple of levels here and there. Extra aren't such a bad. Thing. We can just go right to the end of the map. No need to fight back through, it's so convenient. Yeah. Gotta have Jagan somewhere with these games for awkward. And in terms of the difficulty for you'll just have like a sudden jump. Players will be all confused. Um oh interesting. I didn't realize Mankey and Psyduck were considered that strong. Yeah, I mean, M Mankey, I've definitely noticed, does not scale very well. I think its growths are kind of off. Um, but I don't know how Primeape is. I haven't seen Primeape's growths. If Primeape's growths are particularly good, then it might be able to justify its its late game evolution. Being stuck, I think, it's for so many levels as, as a Mankey, it's definitely detrimental. Yeah, I, that's that's good. I think it's good for everything to be usable. Um, so go ahead and trigger this. But I think um, I like the the sort of the design mentality that everything should be usable, but not everything should be good. <laughs> like uh, it's okay for things to be better than other. That mindset. It uh, helps to emphasize a sense of progression. Now notice, oh yeah, we got a Pikachu to spawn. That's amazing. Um, we cannot call to get to it though, which is not amazing. So uh, the Pikachu is not particularly guaranteed. But we're gonna send. Um, I really left someone further back actually. <laughs> oh. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess we send Side up. And, uh, let's just knock out some of this stuff. In fact, we could actually, I think, yeah, we could get to that Caterpie, potentially, if this grass wasn't in the way. Let's start by taking that out. Just glare at it angrily until it gets out of our way. And then, in theory, we could capture... We need to actually... That one is actually a little bit better than the last one. Hmm... 
Leer would be nice to have on our main key, but I can spend money on it. Um, okay, so we can use Gust on that, and then capture it with an Ember. Hopefully the Pikachu doesn't find a way to knock itself out on us. worried that the Pikachu will just come and knock out the Beedrill. Uh, oh, it's not actually flying type. It's bug poison. Pretty good. Thunder wave, though. That's not very good. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I think we back the Beedrill up, just to make sure that we have Beedrill in the next round. comes in with a Thundershock. Oh, that's great that we got to hit it, hit it with a Retaliation. Uh, that is really, really good. That means it's basically a free capture. Oh, got a Pikachu. Heck yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. There we go. Has 90% chance to capture. Fantastic. Who's caught? Now, at this point, I'm kind of curious if we can beat this Beedrill. Looks like maybe we can. Though so maybe not. I haven't actually tried to damage it. Yeah, let's not bother. Hmm. I don't think how it could be possible. It just has so much damage access. Like 17 is so much. And that's on a tackle. Oh, it doesn't have bug bite. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey, well, thanks for hanging out at all. It's good to have you here. Yeah, big time. Get a little bit of XP. Sure that that would knock it out. All right, and Psyduck is safely away here. We're gonna wait another turn. probably want to hit it with an ember. Let's try that. And then see if our Beedrill can stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Okay. Well, I mean, Charmander is definitely getting knocked out for that. Oh, but we got a burn on it. Actually, maybe not. Because that majorly decreases his strength. Twenty-five percent strength, so it quarters your strength. And does burn down. Ah, yeah. is looking good here. Huge. And here we get a huge boss knockout. So this is probably gonna level Charmander up. Yeah. He's fine, Charmander. Get out of here.
Oh, thank you. Save. I'm see. I'm gonna take a little break. Take a, a little focus break. I think that would be good. Grab some water. Have a little smoke. I'll be back. There. Ooh, we gotta. Let's pick our team first, though. But we do probably want to drop something. Uh, hmm. Up these two in favor. He could shoot. Well, I guess we only need to drop one. Huh? The water typing, I feel like we need more. And then let's put wise glasses on Pikachu. It's actually surprisingly strong. We'll take the uh Muscle band, we'll put that on. Neuro. Alright, cool. Got my little focus break thing to let people know I went. Right back. 